All right, everyone, it's time for the morning breaking news, which is uh, Andrew Gillum and Project Veritas related, both of which are trending worldwide right now. So it looks like uh, Gillum might get knocked out. This might be our, our November surprise, our Halloween spooky surprise. Uh, he's running against DeSantis, of course, for the position of governor of Florida. Uh, and Project Veritas has exposed one of his staffers as having some very, very strange views. Uh, there were three separate things. Link in the description to Veritas video. You should, by the way, definitely subscribe to Project Veritas. They're constantly smeared. Um, they're just doing investigative journalism that, you know, lamestream journalists won't do. Because lamestream journalists, they'll investigate, like, Trump and his inner circle. They'll, they'll do that all the time. But they never bother to investigate any of the Democrats, or really, at this point, a lot of the centrist Republicans. They, they let the whole political fucking establishment go and on their merry way. And only if some private citizen exposes something do they even report on it. Like, they would have had no idea that Gill Gillum's uh, apparently college friend... Uh, not just staffer, but long-term buddy, has racist views and has exposed the fact. Now, he, keep in mind, this is someone who's been in interpersonal conversation with Gillum. Somebody, he's, he's beyond just a normal staffer. He's not just doing it because, hey, you know, I'm a college kid, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going in for my master's in poli-sci. I think I'll you know, volunteer for a campaign and, and I'll put that down and be like, yeah, yeah, I've done, like, political stuff or something. Or maybe I'm trying to get, become mayor or something. Uh, it goes beyond that. This is someone who's had interpersonal contact with Gillum. He is saying on this video, fundamentally, yeah, Gillum is going to make these promises. No, he's going to break them. He's not going to fulfill them. <laughs> it's never going to happen. By the way, the good, a good way to go is to whip up the poor and the middle class into a frenzy, which, by the way, have I not been chastised by certain people from the left when I point out that this is the operative strategy of Democratic campaigns today? That's funny. Andrew Gillum seems to think it's an operative strategy, or at least his staffer and good friend does. <laughs> so, essentially, what you do is that what they're doing, the neoliberals, which G Gillum is saying basically he's running as though he's further left. You know, he's running in a, in a race where he has to appeal to minorities and stuff. Ultimately, though, he's just a corporate sellout. He's a neoliberal, and he's not going to do any of those things. But he'll dog whistle about them. And then his staffer says uh, basically something I can't even repeat on YouTube with regards to white people. Well, actually, I probably can because it's okay to be hateful against us for some reason. Uh, that's not against the TOS of any of these sites at this moment. Uh, but, but basically, he goes on his little racist diatribe about them uh, and then how bad they are. Now, uh, maybe they'll use the excuse, oh, no, 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 they're only talking about like retirees that come down, down here from like New York. Yeah, those, those people are fucked up, and, and you know, maybe they are, but uh, no, I think he was talking about all the white citizens in Florida. So keep that in mind when you go to vote, I suppose, what Andrew Gillum and his <laughs> inner circle, uh, which is what the staffer is apparently a member of, uh, really think about you. Separately, this is going to be a five-video day, because Donnelly also the other day had his October surprise. Uh, again, you know, linked to crazy comments. In that case, Donnelly himself made them on a live debate stage, and people are like, what the fuck are you doing? You're already like two, three points behind in the race. You say this, bye. Uh, by the way, the Republicans just won the Senate. They're probably going to win the Florida governorship now, too. Like, DeSantis has trailed by a point or two in most of the polls continuously for a month. This could easily flip that. Now, early voting, of course, you know, maybe leaves him behind, but he's been ahead in that, too. Republicans have had higher turnout in early voting, uh, anyway, including in the Florida gubernatorial race, including in, in most of these races, uh, most of the, the close races, the Republicans are at least a little bit ahead in. It gives them, by the way, a, a point or two buffer against any last minute poll movement, you know, in, in the wake of uh, SAOC or any of that stuff. Now Gillum uh, is exposed by Veritas as having been a slime ball all along. Now they just expose cinema too in Arizona. It'll be interesting to see if that causes, in the, in the twilight of this election, you know, you've got five fucking days left, uh, if that causes any movement. It's already taken a hit on McCaskill. She's probably been knocked out by Veritas. They could be three for three. If they knock out Cinema, Gillum, and, and McCaskill, the Republicans had better come by with a gift basket for James O'Keefe. And there are some people like on Twitter saying, well, O'Keefe never does this to Republicans. He's just a partisan. Yeah, he's a partisan, absolutely. And so are you. You never do it to Democrats. It's all fucking point. You're just concerned because this is a close midterm election, and, and it's natural. Like, this isn't a normal thing. You don't even need to be corrupt. They're partisans. 
uh, of whatever branch. Yeah, they're concerned. They're like, no, 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 not right now. Come on. Just leave it alone until after the midterms. Sort of you know, pull a Mueller. By the way, they were trying to say that Mueller probably indicted Trump. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course he did. Yes, yeah, so, uh, that's again, it's not just a pre midterm claim to try to sow some degree of confusion. The Arizona and, and uh, uh, Missouri Senate races are very important to Democrats. They're probably going to lose at least one of those, maybe both. They wanted Texas. Beto's been knocked out. Gillum probably now you know, is on the ropes. Like, even if you're ahead by a couple points, if the, the opponent has a lead in early voting, that could show what the, the polls in Florida, which have been fixated on now for weeks, especially, I mean, they're shitposted every day on 4chan, if you pay attention to the discrepancy between that and the polling in these races, it appears as though you might have a, a point or two polling bias in favor of Democrats that is not reflected in final turnout. That would point to a systemically flawed methodology that would throw several important House and Senate races to the Republicans. That's why I've, I've decided from now, I'm not even going to really make a final prediction for the House because there's so many toss-ups with so few polls. And there's so much of a discrepancy, it appears appearing in the early voting results, it would be suicidal probably to bother. It's a 50-50 shot. Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to tell who's going to control the House at the end of the election. I'm, I'm thinking the, the uh, methodology of people like Nate Silver is now in deep question at this point. In the Senate, there's no question. The Republicans hold the Senate. Probably end up with 53-54 at the end of the night. It could be higher. Again, if there's a, a two or three point polling differential, some of those races, like they've been, uh, what is it, four or five points behind continuously in Montana. That throws it back to toss up status right there. Any last minute surge in turnout could give them every single one of these, but Mendez could be in, in danger at that point. But Andrew Gillum is a big one because you've got this open uh, gubernatorial seat in which Nelson and, uh, and uh, Rick Scott are battling out. So Rick Scott was governor. He vacates in order to run for the Senate, where he's literally in a dead even race with Bill Nelson. Nelson has been like a point or a half a point ahead, more or less, most of the race. But it's like, I mean, who even fucking cares? I don't even care. I hate Rick Scott. So if he, he, he would be potentially dead weight on the Republicans if he wins, the same way that Donnelly in Indiana, if he wins, isn't he going to be dead weight on the Democrats? Or at this point, all of these people, the Democrats keep trying to circle the wagons in the social media era, and it doesn't really work because with Veritas, with some of these releases, you can get the candidate in their own words. So when the candidate tries to come out and spin it, say, no, 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 this is what I actually meant, it looks totally foolish. And Gillum will probably come out and say, no, 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 I'm not, it's, no, no, he doesn't speak for me. This fact that he's, you know, a fairly close friend and a, a higher level staffer, apparently enabled to talk to other, you know, would-be staffers slash uh, undercover journalists, uh, he doesn't speak for my actual views. No, 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 I'm not going to break my promises, poor people. I'm not trying to whip you up into a frenzy. He's probably used those exact words in strategy meetings multiple times, which is why the staffer is using such terminology. You think he just picked it out of his ass? I don't think he did. And as for his staffer being, you know, racially insensitive, you know, it's uh, like, again, be a bigot all you want. But if you get exposed for having certain views, people are going to think a certain way about them. You shouldn't be censored or deplatformed. But what's Andrew Gillum supposed to do? He's not going to be able to have this dude on his campaign. And you got to understand this five days fucking left before everyone votes. This is the worst possible time. End of October, couple first days of November to be hit by one of these reports. McCaskill's already down for the count. She's probably lost. Cinema could go down in the polls. A lot of people are hoping, a lot of people are expecting, because Arizona leans red anyway, that some of those, that that'll have an effect. If both of them get knocked out, the Republicans have won the Senate already. They keep it, They keep steady at 51 at that point. Because they're at 50 just because Ted Cruz is no longer on the chopping. In fact, I think that'd take him to 52 actually. And they're ahead in Indiana. That's 53. Any of these other races, there's like, what is it? Uh, I think it's Minnesota 2, uh, Montana, which is hilarious. Um, although they could pull out there. I think, isn't there Utah as well? And then technically Menendez. I wouldn't expect Menendez to fall. And then there's Florida, where they've got a 50-50 chance. It's looking rosy for them in the Senate. And then and, and keep in mind, if you have these reports and they go viral, the general tendency is that that will have some effect on other races, potentially among you know people who keep up to date more with politics, especially younger voters that use like Twitter and stuff more. So they're looking at this and saying, 
okay, we've got the Caskill and Cinema and Gillum and all these corrupt people, it's going to start demoralizing some of the center-left voters. You know, any, any more significant scandals, like if Veritas makes a big release tomorrow, you know, maybe it knocks out Bill Nelson or something, it'd be significant, highly significant. In fact, Veritas is more significant, I think, right now in these midterms than it was in 2016. Overall, they've had a bigger impact. They've, they've probably destroyed McCaskill's career. This could destroy Andrew Gillum's career. They could destroy Cinema's career. And altogether have you know, skyrocketed compared to even 2016. The releases then, a lot of them ultimately had very little effect. They had, uh, I can't remember, what, what was the one main release? It was with, uh, what's his name there, Bob something or other, the one that works as a DNC middleman. That should have had a huge effect, but of course, it sort of fell flat with anyone who wasn't already undecided and in such a partisan election, a lot of people were. Uh, but yeah, Gillum might get knocked out. Good riddance, by the way. I mean, he's already corrupt. He's known to be corrupt. Didn't he like uh, get get treats from an FBI undercover agent and, and he's kind of under investigation anyway? Why the fuck is he even running? That's about all. Peace out.